When I walked down the aisle in 2004, I even wore the diamond tiara that has been in the family for generations. All right, so here it is. But its history remains a mystery. Fine jewelry specialist Joanna Hardy will hopefully cast some light on its story. Oh, excellent. How did you feel on the day when you put this on? I, did you know how to put it on? No. I mean, like, I mean, I mean listen, <laughs> I thought it was almost a joke when they were like, you're going to wear the tiara, and you're like, wait, what? And I had never seen it before. But when did you first set your eyes on it? When I was upstairs getting my hair done, it was brought in to me. On the day? On the day. I didn't see on this. On the day? Yeah, I never saw this until the day. Really? Till, like an hour before. Yeah. No. <laughs> I promise you. Literally, probably an hour before I walked down the aisle. I felt like it almost symbolized uh, sort of this entry into this whole new world and an acceptance. You know, I'm thinking, oh, they're letting me wear the tiara. I'm now part was, of the family. It was confirming, wasn't yeah. it? There was a sense of belonging. Yes. Looking at it now, I mean, it's beautiful, oh, isn't it's, it? It's absolutely, it's, it's stunning. So what I'm looking at here is that this is silver and gold, mm -hmm. which jewellery was made with silver and gold up until about 1900, when you then had platinum. Because mm -hmm. this is roses. I mean, roses is you know, attributed to Venus, and that's all about love. And you've got the rose buds here. Mm -hmm. You've got the serrated leaves of yeah. the rose leaves. Wonderful. And But also, the, with the language of, of flowers, you always have um, the rose, because there'll be a thorn as well. It's sort of the pleasure and pain of love. So it's all about the symbolism for a wedding. OK. All right, so I have a question for you. This is Alberta. This is my husband's great-grandmother. So she's come over from America, yes. married George Montague, who eventually became the ninth Earl of Sandwich. And this is her wedding day. This is 1905. You know, I tried to convince myself very hard that she's wearing the tiara here. She is wearing a tiara, but there's a number of things that went on with tiaras, especially uh, British tiaras, because they were part of a family. A lot of tiaras have changed over time. Um, the Duchess of Sussex, yes, her, did, her tiara. What did Megan, what was, what was Megan's tiara again? It was Queen Mary's bandeau that was made in 1932, but oh. the centerpiece was a brooch that she was given on her wedding day in 1893. Okay. She then put the two together. together. And this happens a lot <gasps> with, with tiaras. So going back to this one, you've got this central motif here. Yeah. And then you've got these two side pieces here. Now, if you look at it, can you see that actually they don't fit? They were not made huh. at the same time as the main piece in the front. Oh, my goodness. Then, at the bottom here, mm -hmm. which is a necklace. <gasps> what? Yeah, it's a necklace. You can take it off and wear it as a necklace. Now, all of these pieces are all similar period. OK. Which is about 1880. But they did not start <gasps> off life altogether like this. OK. Then, this box here with the Garrard & Co, mm -hmm. goldsmiths and jewellers to the king, by special appointment to the Crown, 24 Albemarle Street in London. OK. And they moved here in 1911. This box has, cannot be any earlier than 1911. Right. OK? Right. Now, 1911 was also the coronation of King George V. OK. So these so pieces were put on in 1911 for the coronation. Oh, oh my gosh, this oh, makes got, sense. I can't I've believe it. I myself. So do I. <laughs> I can't wait to I tell my husband sense. this. The coronation of King George V. That's the current Queen Elizabeth's grandfather. To think that although at the time of the coronation, Alberta wasn't yet the Countess of Sandwich, it's totally possible that she wore this priceless tiara to the celebrations. Now that I know this, I kind of feel like I'm bringing Alberta back to life. I kind of think I have an American tiara on my head. Alberta's portrait hangs center stage at Maverton. I feel like she's looking down at me, making sure I'm okay. 
Since she was the first American Countess of Sandwich, I really want to find out more about her. The family archive is full of her letters and diaries. And my father-in-law, the current Earl of Sandwich, is Alberta's grandson and knew her when he was a child. She is not only a fellow American, she's also from Illinois, which is where I'm from. And technically, you do have quite a bit of American blood in you, which then makes my children even more American than English. That if is I... true. That <laughs> is exactly. True. No, I'm very proud of my American quarter American I am. I have so many questions to ask you. Number one, did she keep her American accent? She had no American accent that I can remember. <laughs> no. She was quite an elderly lady, had a rather pearly hairstyle, and she always had a present in a cupboard if you uh, were children. Right, so when you would visit her, she would have a present for you? Always something. <laughs>